here to give you a little demonstration on how I go about shopping in hand saws. And uh, I've got a hand saw in the vise right here right now. It's uh, seven points to, uh, to the inch. It means there's seven teeth uh, and seven spaces in an inch. It's a fairly good sized tooth and for demonstration purposes. And also, uh, this particular saw, I've sharpened most of the saw all the way up until this point. I only have a little bit of it left to do, but uh, when we get up close to it, you can see how badly spaced and everything these teeth are. This was a very, very uh, badly sharpened saw. These are the teeth on the file, uh, on the saw here that I've already filed. And you can see that the, the gullet spacing is pretty close to the same, the depth of the teeth and the spacing looks very, very close to the same. It's not going to be perfect because the saw was so out of shape. It would usually take two or three times of sharpening the saw to get it to look anything near this. But as you get going down here now, you can see that, that uh, th these teeth here aren't anywhere near as deep. These haven't been filed. And then as you get going down even further, look how bad the spacing is on this saw right in here. You see the big gigantic flat spat on the top of this tooth? and then on the top of this next tooth here, and yet this one is very, very small here, then another big large one here. That's all got to do with the way it was filed last time. It, it, it was pretty horrendous. So we're going to be able to go right through on one pass right through their filing and straighten that right back out again, get all the gullet depths the same and all the heights the same. So we've jointed it down quite a ways. That just means I've filed all the teeth nice and straight, nice and flat, so that we've got flat spots on top of all the teeth uh, and that's our gauge. When we file down far enough that then flat spots disappear out of the camera completely or out of my eyesight as I'm filing, that's where we stop. Just in, and uh, a lot of people recommend that you file some of the teeth from one side and then you turn the saw around and file the other teeth from the other side. Well, I've never been able to accomplish that. So I file all the teeth from one side and I'm actually switching back and forth from this angle to this angle as I file. And uh, on the table here, I've got some lines drawn uh, that, I'm, that I'm actually hovering the file over when I'm, when I'm working. And uh, the other thing is, is that I have a, here a triangular file handle. And uh, it's 60 degrees on each corner, right, which gives you 180 degrees. And the file's exactly the same. So I've inserted the file, and I've got a 10-degree difference between the top of the file and the top of the handle so that the file is tilted a little bit more this way than the top of the handle is. So as I'm filing, I keep the top of the file handle exactly or as close to level as I can keep it, just gauging it myself, and that should put a 10 degree tilt on the file forward. And then I've also got these lines. These are 10 degrees on each side of 90 degrees across the saw. So it's 10 degrees this way and 10 degrees this way. And I'm keeping the, level, the file level in this respect as I file. And the other few things about it is, is that when I'm trying to gain the space in here on the saw and trying to get back to a nice even spacing, you know, I really don't have anything to look at except the flat spots on the top and the depths of the cut in between the teeth. So it's all done visual. I don't count the amount of strokes on each tooth. I have no idea whether I've even been there, uh, how many times I've been in that, in that, in that area. I just do it by visual. And, uh, I'm making very immediate decisions as I file about which tooth to drop the file into and whether I should be filing in this direction or this direction. It's just a matter of immediate discretion, actually. Switching. You'll see that I'm able to shift from this angle. And I'm, I've got my file hovering over those lines on the bench below me to maintain my angle. And now I'm going to switch to the other angle. Now I have to file this fairly aggressively because there's quite a ways to go. It's not like a touch-up or a light sharpening. This is a very heavy sharpening right here because of the amount of material that I've jointed down to get to the last tooth. Now at this stage of the game, it doesn't matter too much if you're a little bit off on your angle because you've got so much material left that you can correct for it. Now I can also influence this file to file forward against the tooth that way or backwards against the uh, striking face of the tooth in this direction. 
and not just at the mercy of filing straight down with it. I can influence it. This is straight down. These are straight down. And this I can push it a little bit towards forward. And like I say again, I'm not keeping track of how many strokes I've made on any tooth. I've not kept track of where I've been. I'm just getting a visual on it. Real quick, I can decide immediately where I want to go, how many strokes I want to make. And I try to, as I'm, as I'm working the meat off of it here, I just try to keep my file in the same direction and just keep switching teeth. And then as I get a little bit closer to the final outcome, I'll start switching back and forth quite a bit more. I can go back and forth through here. That tooth doesn't look deep enough. So I'm starting to set the spacing of the flat spot and the gullet at the same time. Now I keep moving that light so that it'll reflect off those flat spots right directly up in my eye. In the, in the very end here, as the rats get smaller and smaller, it's important to now start checking the spacing, the gullet depth, and still maintaining the same flat spot on the left hand and the right hand side of the file. Now, I've got one that's very close to done right here, and this one's not quite so close to done. So as I file this, I want to not file straight down, but I want to influence the file against that striking face of the tooth. So I'm going to go a little bit lighter and I move that tooth over a little bit like that. That worked out pretty good right there. Yeah, here we go now. See, and oh, they're starting to disappear very quickly. These are all done up in here. I'm searching for flat spots. I don't see any. I don't see any. And now I'm starting to get a very small one here and in here. Now this whole area here needs to be finished yet. So after we've uh, filed all the teeth, uh, we've, we're going to set the teeth one to the left and one to the right. So this is a little saw set, it's kind of like a pair of pliers, and you put it up on here, and you line it up with the tooth that you're trying to set, and give it a little squeeze, and that precision sets the tooth so that they're all identically set. And now I'm going to unclamp the vise and turn the saw around. Put it back in. I've got it way up higher than I would when I'm filing it, just so that the uh, vise is not in my way. And then I'm going to start at the tip here and work my way back. Well, that pretty much completes the filing and the setting of that seven-point hand saw and uh, it's done very nicely for one pass and I pretty much defy anybody with a machine to match the quality of that filing job. Now I'm going to give you a little demonstration as to how well one of these saws cuts. Now this is not the exact same saw that you saw me filing in the video but it's a very similar saw and it's filed exactly the same way by myself. It's been in my toolbox for a week or two and I've used it quite a bit but it's just about as sharp as when I started and uh, I've got a little piece of building material here on the sawhorse that I'm going to cut with it and you'll see how well it works. And now that was just like I say a piece of building material but I'm going to switch over to a piece of nice hard white oak here and see if that makes any difference. Just like that. 